Are you dating a divorced dad? Is he ready for love? Well, we're going to explore that today. In honor of Father's Day today, I thought I'd shoot a video about dads. And since most people over 45 years old are divorced with children, um, I think this would be an interesting conversation to talk about. In addition, I, I'm going to share with you what I wished I knew after my divorce, when I began this journey of exploring love uh, in my life as well. Um, let me just say this. Mothers, though, I, I want to acknowledge mothers really quickly because I do believe they are the backbone uh, of raising children. And while there are certainly many cases where women uh, are absentee parents, and there's certainly significant percentage of men who are make, uh, you know, are amazing fathers and they take the primary role, I just still want to acknowledge that I think women are the backbone of raising children. Now, if we talk about dads, let's take a step back for a moment. I saw a Instagram post uh, from somebody. Um, please forgive me. It looks like my phone is still on. Instagram post from someone that talked about fathers aren't this hallmark uh, card version of what we experience on this day. In other words, there's so much uh, conversation out there about how great dads are. And while there's certainly plenty of fathers who are good fathers, there's certainly plenty of men who were, this, this meme said, uh, fathers are usually our first bullies in life. And it made me think about that. And while I have a picture of my father and I there, and I, I have a great deal of respect for my father, and I certainly um, think he was a very good man, he raised me in a generation, and this is true for many men like myself, we were raised in a generation where corporal punishment was actually the norm uh, of being, you know, being raised in that, that um, demographic or that, um, you know, experience of those of us who are baby boomers or Gen Xers because their fathers did corporal punishment. Now, why am I getting into this? I think it's important to recognize that many human beings have been deeply wounded uh, in their childhood, not by an intentionally cruel parent or anything. It was just part of the norm for many of us in midlife, at this stage in our lives, who are baby boomers or Gen Xers. And while I cognitively know that my father did the best he could, as a child, I experienced, and I'm sure many men that you are dating out in the marketplace experienced, you know, a rough upbringing. Why this is so critically important is because while I think a lot of men have worked really hard on not having that bleed over that rough childhood that they had bleed over into how they raise their children, I think it's important to recognize that whether you're a man or a woman, we, we many of us have experienced very tough childhoods and hopefully we've tried to improve upon that with the next generation. And I hope the next generations after that and the next generations after that see an improvement. So what do you need to be thinking about when it comes to dating a divorced dad? Well, I think how his mindset is after the divorce can play a significant role into whether or not he's capable of falling in love. So did he have a bitter divorce? Did he have a contentious divorce? Did he have um, issues with the children in the divorce? I think it's important to really understand where his mindset is after this experience. And I say divorce as an experience. Where is his mindset at? In addition, what is his relationship with his children after this divorce? I think is critically important to evaluate. And while many of you can see the good and the compassion for the man you might be dating, there are certainly reasons why couples have contention after a divorce. Now, most of the time, people go into their own corners and they're protecting their territory. I know women do this after divorce and men do this after divorce. And, and oftentimes they're at odds with one another. But just remember, if they're at odds with one another, that will bleed over into any future relationship and the capacity that person can love. Just remember, a divorce is the unraveling of the tapestry of a life you had with another person. And it's certainly important that an individual integrates into their own life going forward.
And particularly, I think one of the things you ladies may want to consider when dating a divorced dad and is he ready for love is what is his attitude about relationships? What is his attitude about relationships? Really hone into, because while we all human beings are thirsty for companionship, connection, and physical intimacy with another person, but what is their attitudes towards relationships? I know many women, as an example, have a negative attitude towards relationships, and that is just piggybacked by the men that have negative attitudes. For example, the negative attitude about getting remarried. If someone has a negative mindset going in, do they truly have the capacity to love going forward? And then certainly we have to recognize what is their relationship with their children? Do they have a contentious relationship with their children? Do they have an overbearing relationship with their children? Do they barely see their children? And in some cases, many men and women experience in a different, uh, their relationship with their children in a different way where their child becomes their primary emotional support person. Let me repeat that. Their child becomes their primary emotional support person. And typically it's a, a woman, um, their son, if they have a, a son in their life, that son could be their uh, primary emotional support person. And for a father, it could be his daughter. And if you're not familiar with something known as emotional incest or covert incest, you may want to Google that. This is where men oftentimes use their daughters as their primary support person, and their daughter is up on a pedestal within that person's life. And I will tell you that if you, if you, know, there's a high probability his capacity to love you will be diminished because his daughter actually takes center stage in his life. Have you ever experienced that where you've been with a man where his daughter was his primary emotional support person? He was the she he talked to her about everything and she approved whether or not you could actually be in his life. I think it's important if you're not aware of this to be aware of this, to pay attention because he might seem like a good father because he's such a doting person to his daughter. And yet at the same time, you're going to be competing with that daughter because this often happens because human beings are hurting on the inside and they choose the closest person in their life to sometimes attach to. And in this particular case, it can oftentimes be a mother with her son and a, a father with the daughter. So the thumbnail for this video says I, what I wished I knew after my divorce when I began dating. And I want to share with you where my journey was to becoming more capable of loving going forward. So Shortly after my divorce, I was completely unconscious as both a father, as a man, as a human being. And it wasn't until I began doing inner work, personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Much of what I talk about in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Begin doing the inner work to be capable of actually loving another human being. This is where a man might need to go to therapy, might go to workshops, might go to trainings to actually start connecting with his heart after being possibly hurt from a previous relationship. And as I mentioned earlier, many of us have experienced childhood wounds and adult traumas that makes it difficult for us to actually lean into a healthy, happy relationship going forward. So you may want to ask the question, what have you done to heal after your marriage? What have you done to heal after your divorce? What have you done to heal? Now, for some men, they'll go, what is healing? That probably indicates that their capacity to maybe be in a relationship exists, but is their capacity to truly love another available to them if they've been deeply hurt from the past? Because sadly, when we've been hurt, Hurt people hurt people going forward. So you may want to pay attention to that. And by the way, everything I'm sharing right now, this is individually. You may want to ask yourself these exact same questions going forward. The second thing I wished I knew is 
wanting to go all in isn't the same as being capable of a relationship. What I mean to say is, and I heard an excellent analogy of this recently when I shot a video with Bev Middleman. Um, imagine that you love sharks, okay? You love sharks. You just love watching shark videos. You love watching you know, movies about sharks. You're just into sharks. And I'm just using this as an example. And let's say, you know, for a Father's Day gift, one of your children was planning that you would do a, a shark dive in one of those shark caves. And you're like, oh my God, that would be so amazing. That would be so wonderful to do that. And you're so excited about it. And you're getting ready for it and getting ready for it and getting ready for it and getting ready for it. And then the day of the, the event and you're on the boat and there's the cage right there and you go, holy crap. I'm scared to death. There's no way I can do this. I am not capable of doing this. See, a lot of people in relationships, just like uh, let's use skydiving as the same analogy, okay? You know, a lot of people may want this all-in experience. They may profess they want an all-in experience. But the minute it becomes time that they go all-in, they're not capable of it. I experienced this shortly after my divorce where I met a woman. I kept saying, I want a relationship. I want a relationship. I want a relationship. And then three months into dating her, I got completely scared of going any further or deeper in. It's like jumping into that shark cage. And it's a great analogy because that's what emotional vulnerability feels like. And I wished I knew this because in many ways I was being disingenuous with women because I kept saying, I'm ready for all in, I'm ready for all in, I'm ready for all in, meaning I'm ready to love. And then I hit my wall. So how do you know when a man is really ready for love? We just said before, they've done the inner work to heal from their past relationships. They've done the inner work to heal childhood wounds and traumas that they've experienced in their life. And at least that makes them better prepared. It doesn't necessarily, as it's not always a guarantee, but have they done healing? Or you may want to pay attention. Does he have the same relationship over and over and over again from one woman to the next to the next? It's probably that person is a serial dater or a serial monogamous. They haven't taken time on themselves to heal. And certainly I wished I knew that early on in my life, which I lear later, learned, uh, later learned in the dating experience. The other thing is there's no rush. It's going to happen when it happens. Every experience prepares you. You know, I'm a big proponent where of, of recognizing that while you may desire a relationship, there's a difference between desiring a relationship and being desperate for it. And more importantly, there's many people that are desperate for companionship, connection, and sex. They have almost a codependent way of approaching things when it comes to their love life. By the way, my coffee mug says radical honesty. I'm a big proponent of radical honesty. There's a link below. I actually have a store now selling all my products, including my mugs. So check out the Radical Honesty. And for Father's Day, all of the proceeds of sales today is going to go to uh, some charity related to children in honor of Father's Day today. Okay? So there's no rush. There's, you know, there's this I need you to complete me kind of thing going on in many people's lives. There's no rush to find a companion. Certainly, I believe in making effort out there. But at the end of the day, when an individual has done the work that I talk about, I believe that they are better prepared and you don't need to rush that. Just be open and receptive to all the experiences are out, that are out there. I think the other thing I wished I knew is having compassion for others. I will tell you that I've witnessed women do this and men do this, where they're simply judging everybody they're meeting in the dating marketplace as being losers, low quality, you know, like think of the words out there, you know, losers, low quality. No, there's a lot of rhetoric that's called they want to experience high quality, which is a judgment for others. But I'm here to say, 
When we begin to have compassion for those in the dating marketplace, when we recognize that those men out there and women out there are just doing the best they can, maybe we can approach the process from a space of love instead of judgment for another human being. Now, the one thing I wish I knew after my divorce, actions have consequences. My unconscious behavior, my unconscious, remember I said, I'm ready for a relationship, I'm ready for a relationship, I'm ready for a relationship. And the minute it was time to get into the shark cage, I pulled back. There are emotional consequences for those who are not ready to be in a relationship because there's an emotional investment that occurs when you're connecting with another human being. And I'm here to encourage everyone to get really radically honest with one another and have these deeper conversations that I talk about in my private coaching. Um, what my clients experience, it's, it's amazing to me because they use the tools and principles that I teach in my private coaching out in the dating world, particularly when it comes to men, to get them to open up, to determine, is this person really capable of love versus those who just want that companionship, connection, and sex? I think for many of us in midlife, we were raised, uh, for those of us who are baby boomers or Gen Xers, we were raised with a blueprint of go to college, get a job, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, start a family. We had this blueprint. And for many of us, that blue, our, when we go through a divorce, that blueprint collides with our reality. And many of us are literally are novices out in the dating marketplace after divorce. Men, women, men and women experience this. They are rather novices. It's one of the reasons why there's a lot of dating, dating and relationship rhetoric out there to give advice. And, and my only encouragement here when you listen to advice is pick apart, pick out what resonates with you and filter out those things that don't resonate with you. But I wished I knew my blueprint because I grew up with a narrative. I had this fantasy of what a relationship should be like. I had no idea until I experienced a couple key relationships after my divorce, what it takes to actually love another human being. And I wish I could impart that advice on most men. And last but not least, in the dating marketplace, I think there's this numbers game approach people take, particularly with online dating, with swipe dating, there's a numbers game approach. And that is very exhausting. I'm here to encourage everyone, ladies in particular, get crystal clear and granular as to who you are as a person. And when you get in touch with your heart, and I'm inviting men to get in touch with their heart, choose people in the dating marketplace that actually are, are more aligned to who you are instead of this random approach of dating. If there's chemistry, it must equal relationship success. And let me just be clear with everyone. Chemistry is, is a factor in relationship success, but to depend upon that for relationship success, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Shared values, blendable lifestyles, and most importantly, emotional maturity is critically important. And that's what I've been talking about all throughout this conversation is emotional maturity is when a man or woman divorced or dating with the children or not are better prepared for a significant relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If it is, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well. And if you need some additional support, check out the links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if work, working with a coach is right for you. Find my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Follow me on Instagram, all listed below. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.